wanted to get to the next topic because the next topic involves something that I did on first take just the other day. But I wanted to revisit it because now that All-Star Weekend, that atrocity that took place in Indianapolis this weekend is over. God bless that I survived the weekend and I was able to come home safe and sound with all my faculties in order, even though it was 19 degrees freezing and boring as hell, I might add. Still doesn't take away from the fact that we got a great NBA season to look forward to in the second half. And so I thought it would be a good time to get into the top storylines resuming this week post All-Star Weekend. I thought it was important to give you my top five storylines heading in to the back end of this season. Okay? So I wanted to do that for you. And I wanted to make sure that you knew where I was going with this. Number five on the list, okay, will be this storyline. You ready? Will the Los Angeles Clippers get to the NBA Finals? Ladies and gentlemen, James Harden hasn't missed a game and has played like a quality all-star caliber player. I can't say enough about Russell Westbrook coming off that bench and Norman Powell and the energizer bunny that Russell Westbrook is and the scorer that Powell is and what they bring to the table. Cannot knock it. All right? I don't know too many teams in the NBA that got cats like that coming off the bench to do some things. Before Kawhi Leonard went down before the all-star break, Did you see how he was playing? He was a legit MVP candidate. He was sensational. And Paul George has been balling too. He said he was going to play bully ball this year, and that's exactly what he's doing. Oh, by the way, did you know that they probably have, they have arguably the best coach in the NBA? Between Ty Lue and Eric Spolstra. Okay? I mean, I got to put Malone in there as well. He's a hell of a coach. But I'm just saying, look at what they got there. Could you imagine, and this is why this is a top five storyline, could you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, If LeBron James is playing for the Lakers and the Lakers are second fiddle because the Los Angeles Clippers win the crown the season before they move into their new stadium or their new arena in Inglewood. Could you imagine if opening night for the new arena is ring ceremony night? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine how that's going to make the Lakers look like Fairweather Stepchilds? That's something to hold on to. Think about it. Because that might be enough provocation for LeBron James to decide I might want to leave Tinseltown and live under these conditions. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Number four on the list would be Dame Dollar, as in Damian Lillard, the reigning two-time three-point shooting champion, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Because guess what? They're still a top three seed in the Eastern Conference. They still have Giannis, who's been playing lights out. Damian Lillard, you know his struggles ain't going to last. He pulled up from half court in the All-Star game. Don't be surprised if he continues that trend come second half of the season because he closes. And if those brothers are clicking offensively, now that we've seen them improve defensively under Doc Rivers, they went from 19th in defensive efficiency, okay, to like 9th or 8th. Think about that for a second and what Giannis and Dame can bring to the table. I know defensively he's no Drew Holiday, but Drew Holiday ain't Damian Lillard offensively. So that's number four on the list. Let me go to number three because this is perhaps the most important one for me. Will Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics win league MVP? You know, ladies and gentlemen, I looked up some things. And as I paid attention to some of the things that was going on, okay, um, I looked at some things and I said to myself, I got to talk to my crew about this. Because I'm just looking at some things right now, and I got to tell you something. When we talk about Jason Tatum, please understand, the Boston Celtics are the best team in the NBA by four games over Minnesota Timberwolves. They got a six-game cushion in the Eastern Conference over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Jason Tatum is averaging 27 a game. He ain't even the highest paid player on this team. That goes to Jalen Brown, who signed his five-year $304 million extension this offseason. So imagine what Jason Tatum is going to get because he clearly is the best player on the Boston Celtics. He's their number one option. Averaging 27 a night. Did you know he was number two in jersey sales? Steph Curry's number one. LeBron James is number three. Jason Tatum is number two. And he's a Boston Celtic. Could you imagine if he won the chip? And I'm going to be, I'm going to say this clear. I'm desperate for him to do it because I love the guy personally. He's a tremendous player. Tremendous role model. 
And oh, by the way, in terms of American-born players, we got to hold on to him because all the stars seem to be from other places. KD ain't getting younger. Steph ain't getting younger. Kyrie's consistency or lack thereof is problematic. Some of the elite players in this game, we talking Giannis, we talking Jokic, we talking Luka. They ain't from America. Embiid, he ain't from America. So when you look at it, you got to ask yourself, Who's that American-born player that can take the bull by the horn, that can snatch the mantle and say, excuse me, this is the place where we invented the game of basketball. This is our town. This is what we do. That would be Jason Tatum. By the way, props to J.J. Redick when I showed that idea to him yesterday. Will the Los Angeles Clippers get to the NBA Finals? He said, will the Los Angeles Clippers win the NBA Finals? Good caveat there. Let's get to number two on the list right now. My favorite. Can the New York Knicks reach the Eastern Conference Finals? Hell yes, they can. Hell yes, they can. And I'm going to tell you the biggest reason why. Because they all hurt right now. Mitchell Robinson's out. OG Ananobi's out. Julius Randle is out. I'm looking at it from that standpoint. Jalen Brunson had even missed a game or so. I'm looking at it from the standpoint, get them brothers rest. Because we know if they were there, they would be running them into the ground. Knicks would be the number two seed right now in the Eastern Conference. But... They would be ran into the ground. Come playoff time, they'd be tired because Thibodeau don't know how to let up. And as a result, they would be compromised. But because they're hurt, chances are they're going to get back healthy. And because they're going to get back healthy, that means they're going to have fresh legs. And because they're going to have fresh legs, that means they're going to be all right. Orange and blue skies, baby. Orange and blue skies. That's what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm thinking about. So I'm going with the Knicks as my number two storyline. Last but not least, number one. LeBron's last stand. LeBron swears he's not trying to go anywhere else, which means he's trying to stay in L.A. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't see the Los Angeles Lakers' chances of winning a chip being better next year and beyond than it is right now. Not with the way Anthony Davis is playing, not to mention his availability because he ain't missing games. When you couple that with the way LeBron's playing, averaging 24-7-7 and in this 21st season at age 39, the way D'Angelo Russell's been playing, the way Rui Hachimura came on strong. I mean, hey, I know they lost Vanderbilt, which is a loss, but Lakers got a chance. And to me, if you're not able to neutralize and nullify the run that the Los Angeles Clippers are on and find a way to derail them or at least keep up with them so they don't claim Los Angeles, not literally because we all know purple and gold, Laker Nation is all about L.A. L.A. will never change in that regard, but I'm just saying. They love, they love their basketball, and they want to be watching basketball in May and June, and if the Clippers are playing and the Lakers are not, well, oh, well. So to me, this is it for LeBron James. This is it. This is his last stand. What you going to do? What you going to do to derail the Clippers? What you going to do to keep up? What you going to do to make sure that you ain't the worst team in California behind the Clippers, behind the Golden State Warriors, behind the Sacramento Kings? What you going to do? We're going to find out. Those are my top five storylines going into the second half of this season, okay? Now that All-Star break is mercilessly over.